So first thing I want to start off by saying is this video is not sponsored or a paid advertisement. I'm just weird and I like gotcha games. So if you want to support me, please drop a comment or follow me if you don't mind. And just remember that I'm new to this whole YouTube and content creating thing and I'm learning as I go. So any support, constructive feedback is greatly appreciated. So now with that out of the way, let's get into the review. So at the time of writing this, Kingdom of Heroes has only been out for roughly about a month. After my Azure Lane video, I wanted to go into the series a little bit differently. I only intended to play for a couple weeks before making a review, and I did create a video that I promptly scrapped. I say that not only to explain how I'm attempting to make these videos, but also to say, I've been playing this game every day for about a month now. So what is Kingdom of Heroes Tactics all about? What epic story does it create? What amazing characters do we follow? I'm super happy to announce that it's King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. Yep, that's not a joke. However, that being said, it's not just following the typical lore. It does have its own take on it. The main character is Arthur in an attempt to reunite the kingdom and bring all the races together. He travels across the land, fighting demons and gathering his knights. And I don't want to go too in depth on the story, but essentially Arthur's father may or may not have caused the kingdom to become overrun by demons in the first place. Also causing the races of the kingdom to no longer want much at all to do with each other. Especially not Arthur. He has to convince them to work together so that they can fight the demons and take back their land. I'll honestly say that I was happy that it only really used the base and the name of a lot of the Knights of the Round Table lore and quickly veered off into its own thing. And as I write this review so far, it's not a long campaign either. It ends on a cliffhanger and I'm interested to see where it goes, but you can definitely get through it in a day or two if you just hammer it out. The battle system is a grid style turn based system. You know, what you'd expect from a game with tactics in the name. You bring four characters into the battle and fight through the enemies and bosses presented until they are all defeated. Most of the real strategy is putting together a team that synergizes well together to face whatever task you have ahead of you. Character movement is based on stats, turn order based on speed, and your character's non-basic attacks work on a cooldown. The cooldown timers lower each time your character's turn comes up, so if your character is fast or has a way to gain extra turns, they can recover use of those skills a lot faster. All in all, the battle system's really not that complex, and I'll leave it to the game itself to explain all the nuances if you try it out for yourself. But to be fair, I don't feel like there's really all that much to explain. It's not really that complex, and it's pretty easy to pick up. As far as additional content, well, there's an arena where you can fight AI teams that your opponents have set up as their defense. This acts as the main PvP portion of the game. You earn weekly rewards for climbing up the ranks, and it's pretty fun to test your team against other players' setups. You can also farm awakening materials and runes in their respective dungeons. And there's also a challenge tower where you can climb from level 1 to 100, progressively fighting harder and harder battles. And if you hit level 100 of the tower, you can attempt hard mode, on top of get a lot better rewards. Now, the reason we love gacha games. The characters! And this game at launch already has a ton of characters. We're talking everything from your usual anime girls, anime boys, badass knights, sexy demons, to just the regular enemies you find as you're playing through the story mode. Slimes, skeletons, fairies, whatever. In fact, it's almost overwhelming how many characters there are so far. And with a game this new, that would normally cause a lot of confusion. Who is worth leveling? I guess I'll Google it. Oh. I already spent all my resources on this character that I thought looked cool, but it turns out they're completely garbage. That is never a good feeling, but there is one positive thing that this game does to make it feel a little less daunting. Every character has a little review area where you can see what other people think of their characters. This can either be very helpful with some of the more helpful information giving solid tips on what you should focus on when you build the character, to people saying how much they love certain aspects of the character's uh, an anatomy. Or one thing you run across a lot, fake comments, people saying, click this for 2,000 free crystals. 
Overall, the review tab has proven to be more helpful than not, so I suggest checking it out if you're interested in building a character. And speaking of leveling your characters, you gain experience through fights, story quests, dungeons, requests, feeding them other characters, or feeding them experience fairies. There's really no shortage of ways to level your character here. You can also strengthen your characters by upgrading their skills. You can do this by feeding them duplicates of themselves, which is an interesting phrase, or you can also use skill fairies. Upgrading a character's skills tend to have some pretty large skill increases, so I suggest doing this whenever you can with your characters. There's also another mechanic called Awakening. Awakening your characters will typically unlock an additional skill that they don't already have access to, and most of the time, you'll want those skills, as they can be anything from just another attack in battle to some pretty nice skill boosts. Not only that, but a lot of characters will also get some new visual differences in their 3D models, which is pretty neat as well. To awaken a character, you just need the required amount of awakening materials. This isn't really so bad, unless you're low on the game's stamina, otherwise I usually just set my characters on auto in an awakening dungeon and do whatever else I need to. So now let's discuss promoting a character. Every character in this game can actually be upgraded to a 6 star hero. All you have to do is level them up to their current max level, and feed them other heroes or promo fairies of the same star level. You also need a number of units equal to the star level as well. For example, do you want your little 2 star to become a big beefy 3 star? Get them to max level and feed them two 2 star units. Simple. You wanna go further? Wanna go from 3 to 4? Just get that character back up to max level and feed them three 3 star characters. And that keeps going. This really doesn't feel all that rough until you want to move a character from 5 star to 6 star. And believe me, if you want to do some real damage or make some real progress in the arena or other aspects of the game, you want those beefy level 70 characters fully awakened with just the right runes. And speaking of runes, you think your character isn't strong enough yet? Well, let me tell you, if you haven't equipped them with runes yet, then your character is nothing. Every character can be equipped with 6 runes. Each rune has its own star rating, rarity rating, and level. You also want to make sure that you're properly setting runes to get their additional bonuses. Some sets require 4 to be set for the additional buff, and others only require 2. This allows you 2 to 3 additional stat boosts just for equipping certain rune types. Runes are maxed out at level 15, and their rarity status automatically improves as you level it. So, even a 2 star rune can become legendary leveling your runes is fairly simple you just need to spend silver coins and hit upgrade and hope it doesn't fail once you get around level 12 that's when things can be a little bit frustrating not only does upgrading get expensive the fail rate can become brutal especially if you have a five or six star rune no joke i've spent 800,000 silver coins maybe more on simply trying to upgrade a rune from level 14 to 15. You can also update substats on a rune once you get the right upgrade stones for them. If you have a rune with good primary stats, but you want to reroll those low substats to either get higher rated ones or just different stats in general, you can do that as well as long as you have the resources. Alright, so the gotcha mechanic itself. You can use the crystals that you earn or buy to pull from whatever the current character banner is, giving you a higher chance of getting the current 5 star character displayed on the banner itself, just like any other gacha game. It costs 30 crystals for a single summon, and 300 for a 10 pull. Doing a 10 pull also guarantees that you get a 4 star, so I honestly suggest just saving up for those 10 pulls. As you play the game, you also get summon scrolls that can be used for additional character pulls. And there are a bunch of different scrolls. I won't go into them all, but normal scrolls are used to pull a 1 to 3 star character, advanced scrolls will give you a chance at a 3 to 5 star character, legendary scrolls will get you a 4 or 5 star or higher character, and divine scrolls will give you a guaranteed 5 star. However, so far I've only seen divine scrolls as rewards for using a certain amount of legendary scrolls. The other scrolls are a bit specific to what they summon, so I don't feel it's worth to go in depth on those, but they typically give you at least a 3 to 5 star of a certain type. And then there's spirit stones. 
You also get them as you play, earn rewards, achievements, etc. 50 of those will get you one random character out of an ever-shifting rotation of 15 characters. However, your chances of pulling a 5 star is around about 1.5%, while a 4 star tends to be around 10%, leaving the 3 stars at about 88.5%. So I suggest saving up your spirit stones until you see a character you really want in the rotation and cross your fingers and pray to the gacha gods. You can also get a character by collecting character pieces, getting a certain amount of those lets you summon that unit, and then there's combining. And honestly, I have not yet gotten to the point where I could combine enough characters or units to get one of these super cool looking units. And even thinking about what it takes to do this is exhausting. I'm sure you could spend money to kill the grind a bit, but I'm getting exhausted even thinking about the time and energy it takes to build up the characters required to do this. And speaking of buying things, let's talk about the elephant in the room. The one thing your friends will always ask you whenever you mention you play a gacha game. Don't they try to tempt you into spending money? And well, yeah, it's a free-to-play game, and they're not doing this for free. They need to make money themselves. And they sure give you a lot of options to spend your money. Step right up. We've got your crystals, your summon packs, your rune packs. Your favorite character not looking fabulous enough? Well, we've got costume coin packs, stamina packs, spirit stone packs, monthly packs, daily packs, and don't forget about the big bad special pack. And that being said, so far, my month of playing this game, I have not once felt like I needed to buy any of this in order to enjoy my experience with the game. And sure, it's there. And there's a lot of options. And these gacha games, while fun, can be mega grindy to make you want to spend money. But I haven't felt the need to yet. It's very free-to-play friendly. There's a lot of achievements, changing events, login bonuses, and things they give you just poking your head in here and there and clicking a button. So, there is a lot going on in this game already. I haven't even gotten into the guild mechanic, or the guild battles, or the earnable points that you get in the game that you can redeem in the store. I've stayed up way later than I've intended to some nights just fusing characters, upgrading runes, or just playing around in the arena. I have not yet once hit a point where I've run out of energy because of how much they tend to give away, and I'm sure at some point that will change, but right now it hasn't been a problem. I think really that's all I want to get into on this one, so what's my overall opinion on the game? I'd say it's definitely worth a download, and while it's not been the best or most innovative gacha game out there, I haven't looked into what non-global servers look like as far as content goes. But where it is at now, I'm definitely interested in seeing what's next for Kingdom of Heroes. So thank you all so much for joining me. And like I said in the beginning, I'm very new to this whole thing and I'm learning and doing all of this on my own. So content may be a little slow and random, but I absolutely appreciate every view and follow. So let me know in the comments if you've played Kingdom of Heroes Tactic Wars and what you thought. Or just tell me what gacha games you love or think I should attempt to review next. And I also stream regularly on twitch.tv slash zany. Um, I play a variety of different games and would love to have y'all join me. So, so until next time, I'll see you later. Stay closeted.